Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This week's video is how to read in a foreign language. So this is definitely something that I recommend every single language learner to do because reading in your target language offers so, so many fantastic benefits. You can learn new vocabulary, you can see how grammar works in different sentences. And also it is super fun if you enjoy reading, that is. If you don't enjoy reading, this might not be the video for you. So to begin with, as I said, this is something that is super important and I've had a lot of people ask me about how to actually read a book in your foreign language. So I decided it was probably time that I made an actual proper video about it. So before we begin, quick disclaimer, this is of course just my own opinion on the subject. I am not at all a language expert. I don't know any scientific methods behind this. This is purely what I find that helps me most. And as you can see, I do have quite a large collection of foreign language books and this method has not let me down yet. So in saying that, let's get on with the video. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is to pick a book in the foreign language. This book can honestly be anything. I know there are a lot of people who say, oh, you should always start with children's books or even just start with reading the news online, things like that. Honestly, I tried at the beginning when I first started learning German, especially I used to read a lot of online news sites. But as someone who is not overly interested in watching the news, I found it very boring and that becomes quite demotivating. And over time, you actually begin to hate reading in your foreign language. So the book that you pick definitely has to be a book that you know you enjoy. Preferably, it should be a book that you've read before, but that's just so you will know the context and you'll know the general story, which can help a lot of the time with new words. So in saying that, as you can see, I do have quite a few German books that are classics. Personally, I absolutely adore the classics, both in English and in German. So I have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, as well as Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I also have all of Jane Austen's other novels, but to save too much time explaining everything, I decided to just pick her most popular. So if classics are not your thing, which of course is understandable because there are quite a few words in classics that are outdated even in English, let alone in a foreign language. So if you're completely new to reading books in a new language, probably should not start with classics. After that, of course, we have the very famous Harry Potter series. Chances are you have read this as a child or a teenager or an adult. Let's face it, these aren't really children's books. But the Harry Potter series is definitely a fantastic starting place. It is also my go-to book for every language that I learn. As you can see, I have the Harry Potter first book in Dutch. I also have it in French. And of course, I have it in German. So Harry Potter is definitely a very good suggestion. You can find these books online a lot. Definitely on Amazon, probably the book depository. I'm not entirely sure where else you can find them. But the Harry Potter series is definitely a good option, especially if you love the series and, of course, if you have read it before. As well as that, other children's books are also super helpful, especially when you're starting out reading in a new language. And the children's book that I prefer to go to is The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Superi. This is... It is a book that is meant for children, however, it does have quite a few useful phrases in it. Of course, there are a lot of completely unuseful phrases in it, similar to the Harry Potter series, words like wizards, magic. They're not everyday words that you will need, so do bear that in mind if you are learning a language purely for a business side or for functionality as opposed to wanting to actually become fluent in the language then news sites would probably be your best bet. But if you're like me and you just love learning languages and you want to know as much as you can, then The Little Prince is a very, very good start. So once you do have your book selected, it is time to move on to how to actually learn a language by reading. 
So to explain my method to you guys, I will be using The Little Prince as an example, simply because these two books are probably the best example that I have of to how you can give yourself the best start when it comes to reading a book in a foreign language. So to begin with, this is in English. I read this book many, many years before I decided to start learning German. So it is always helpful to have a copy of the book in your native language, in your mother tongue. However, it is not necessary, but it is definitely helpful. If you cannot get the book in English or in your native language, or if you would just prefer to stick with the foreign language, then there is always bilingual books. This is Zweisprache Aufgabe because it's in German. However, this type of book has both the foreign language, your target language, and also your native language. So for me, in this case, it has it in German and it has it in English. This is also super helpful because, as you can see, you have your native language on one side and you have the foreign language on the other. So instead of having to constantly have a dictionary or constantly having to look up words, you can usually glance across and almost immediately find out what word means which. Of course, if you would rather not use your native language at all, if you want the extra challenge, or perhaps if you are already skilled in that language, you can go for purely foreign language books that have no English or none of your native language in them at all, and that will work just as well. There will just be a bit more work involved. So in saying that, how do you actually use these books to improve your target language? So the three things that I always make sure to have, number one, of course, is the book, obviously. Number two is a pencil. You can use a borrow, but personally I prefer a pencil because it's a lot easier to rub out mistakes. And also a set of sticky notes. Of course, you don't have to use these. You can use your phone, you can use a piece of paper, you can put the words straight into Quizlet if that's what you prefer. But personally, I like having a physical handwritten version of the notes. So in saying that, when you do start the new book, the first thing you need to do, according to my own method, is to read the entire page first. Do not stop to look up words, do not stop to underline anything, just open the book and read the first page. From that, you can usually get a few words, you can get the context. If you're lucky, you might understand everything. If not, that is perfectly okay. You are just learning and we will get to that in a moment. So first thing, read the entire page. And once that is done, try to explain to yourself what is happening. You don't necessarily have to translate it into your native language. You can if you want, of course, that is helpful. But personally, I prefer to just try to understand the context in the language that I'm trying to learn. So, for example, to read a sentence in German here, I then try to simplify that sentence still in German. This is also really good for finding out where you have gaps in your knowledge. For example, you might understand a sentence completely, but if you cannot simplify it, then you don't know that topic well enough. But as I said, if you were new to a language, if you were just starting out, don't worry about it. Of course, you're not going to know anything. This will help you learn. So after you've read the entire page, I want you to go paragraph by paragraph. So you read the first paragraph. Again, try to explain to yourself what's happening. And then, and only then, do you come back in with your pencil or with your biro or whatever you're using to take notes and underline the words that you do not know. So read the paragraph, go back in more slowly, underline the words you don't know, read the paragraph again. After you've this done, now it is time to look up the words that you don't know. If you do have a bilingual book such as this, you can probably guess which word is which, depending on how much of the words you already know. If you do not have a bilingual book, but you do have the book in your native language, then of course you can cut straight across to that and try and figure out what word is which, depending on where you are. This does get a bit more complicated since, as you can see, the page sizes aren't the same. There is extra writing on this that there isn't in this. 
So just keep that in mind that sometimes you might have to turn the page in one book without having to turn the page in the other. If you do not have any version of the novel in your native language, then of course find a dictionary, find a thesaurus, find a Google Translate if you want to. Just find some credible source to look up what the words mean. Once I find out what a word means, I like to write it in the side margin. When I first started this reading in a target language, I used to write the meaning of the word above it. In fact, you can probably still see this in my Harry Potter book, which was the first book I attempted to read in German. You can see where I have rubbed out quite a few words that were written above other words. It was a good idea at the beginning, but I feel the best way to study a book and the best way to learn a language is to reread the same material over time and time again. And as my language level improved, there were a lot of words in this book that I knew and that I didn't have to look up. But the simple fact that English was written above it automatically made me look at the English word. So while it may be a great idea at the beginning, when you do come back to rereading the book, you're going to have all the answers above all of the lines, and that is only going to be detrimental to your learning. So I now write the words in the side margin. That way, when I can go back and reread this, I can see, okay, this word's underlined, but if I know it, I can continue, that's fine. If I don't know it, then the answer is at the side. So it doesn't ruin your learning, it doesn't spoil the book for you, but it does give you help if it is needed at a later date. So once you have read the paragraph, you've underlined the words you don't know, you've translated them into your own native language, then it comes to writing them on the sticky note, on the piece of paper, putting them into your Quizlet app, whichever it is you choose. So this is very simple, just the word in the target language and then the word in your native language. And once a sticky note is full, I like to keep them at the back of the book. Thankfully, the back of this book has a few blank pages, so I can add them here. So for example, this is the intro or the Einführung according to it in German, which is also really helpful. And I can open this and I have a list of the words. It's super helpful to have them all in one place, so you can quickly revise it if you want to, or you can put these on flashcards, again, if you just want to learn the vocab. But once you have that done, so you have read the page, you've read the paragraph, you've underlined the words you don't know, read the paragraph again, translate the words, preferably at the side of the page, then you're going to read the paragraph one final time, and try to remember what the words are, or of course if you're just starting out and you can't remember, that's perfectly okay, you can just glance across to where each word is translated, and by then you should get the general idea of the paragraph. It is very, very, very important that you do not translate every single word. This is actually very bad for learning. You end up relying completely on the translation and you don't learn how to get things based on the context. So for example, here there is a word Riesenschlange. At the time I did not know what that meant, however now as I reread it I know that Riesen means large and Schlange means snake. So Riesenschlange is very likely a big snake. When you go to the translation, you can see he is talking about a boa constrictor, which is a very large snake. So you can usually get the idea of things based on context. Thankfully, German is a very logical language, so you can usually guess what words mean just by breaking the word apart. However, of course, other languages might not have that luxury. But do try your best to understand things from the context, from the drawings, from images, from everything that you can, and only translate as a last resort. So once you've all of that done, it's time to move on to the next paragraph. Again, reread through the paragraph, underline any of the words you don't know, reread through it again, just in case you understand them from context, translate them if you have to, and then reread it a final time knowing now what each of the words you previously didn't know actually means. And of course, write your answers on 
whatever paper you're using and you can stick that somewhere helpful. Once I do have a chapter done, I usually add these to a Quizlet app especially. You can add these to any flashcard app that you like. You can add them even to physical flashcards, wherever you prefer to learn your vocabulary. And with the sticky notes, there's also the added advantage of having them all in one long place, in one list. This makes it a lot, a lot quicker to actually transfer them into flashcards at a later date, instead of having to reread everything and trying to find the words that you underlined. So that is the method that I use. It does seem like it will take a long time. I know I have pretty much over explained things. It does not take as long as you expect. This is actually a relatively quick method considering that you are learning a new language and you know it is of course just my method but this is the best way I have found to learn new words and to learn grammar structures and to learn an entire new language through reading. So once you have a chapter finished of course then you can always quiz yourself on the chapter, you can go back, you can reread the chapter from start to finish. Try doing that without looking at the definitions and once you have that completed you need to congratulate yourself because you've just read an entire chapter in a different language. So that is my method for learning a new language through reading. It is definitely something that I highly recommend you guys. Of course, I am somewhat biased because I do love reading. However, even if you're not a huge fan, just reading a single paragraph a day will help so, so much with achieving your language goals. There are so many new words you can pick up. And of course, if there are words that you're never going to use, for example, the reason she lang at the large snake, I'm probably never going to use that in a day-to-day -day conversation. You don't have to learn that. Just because you've looked up a word doesn't mean you have to pledge yourself to learning that word. Of course, you can just pick the words that apply to you or that apply to your situation. But it is definitely worth doing. It is definitely worth looking at words you don't know. And like I said, children's books are a fantastic way to start. If you do not like children's books, there are, of course, Harry Potter series, which it's not a children's book. I refuse to admit that this is a children's book. There are, of course, also classics. There are honestly so many classics in so many different languages. I think that classics are a lot easier to get than children's books might be. But as I said, some of the language in classics is slightly outdated. If children's books and classics still aren't your thing, you can always get thrillers such as these two crime books that I have also auf Deutsch. Honestly, there is no shortage of books that you can get in different languages. If you prefer not to buy books or if you prefer to have your books online, then there are thousands of sites that you can find them. Gothenburg Press is a very good example. You can honestly put in the book title that you're searching for, write PDF afterwards, hit enter and you will get so many options. This is especially true for classic books because it is not illegal to have these online. For books such as Harry Potter, it is a different story, but they are out there. So in saying that, I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys will enjoy reading books in foreign languages. I hope you will like this video. I definitely hope that you'll subscribe and I will talk to you guys soon. I update new videos every two weeks. Please do feel free to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I do try to fulfill everyone's wishes. So I will talk to you guys in two weeks.